Ladies and gentlemen, I am the chairman of the European Affairs Committee of the French Senate. This committee has worked at, la work at large on article issues since 2013. Thanks to my colleague and Vice President Andrew Gattola, we published two reports on the Arctic strategy of the European Union and one on the partnership between Greenland and the European Union. Our Foreign Affairs and Defence Committee has also published a report dealing with the geostrategy of the Arctic in a time of climate change. Why such a focus on the Arctic? First, because France has a long tradition of cutting-edge scientific research on the Arctic and the Antarctic. This allows our country to be approved as observer to the Arctic Council 19 years ago. France and Germany operate a common Arctic research base in a small bad. The Polar Institute, Paul Emile Victor, led 24 scientific, scientific programs in the Arctic last year, and France has numerous scientific cooperation, notably with Canada and Russia. Second reason, climate change. French Parliament plays its role in implementing the Paris Agreement. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago we passed a bill to cut national greenhouse gas emissions and achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. The aim of the Paris Agreement is to hold the increase in the global average temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius. This is an important goal. The recent IPCC report on the ocean and cryosphere in a changing climate underlines the role of sea ice and the fact that it holds large amounts of organic carbon. It also put forward the consequence of declining Arctic sea ice on the activity of indigenous people. And of course, we bear in mind that half a million of Arctic inhabitants are European citizens. Lastly, we are well aware of the geographic strategic importance of the Arctic and of the new challenges resulting from the melting of glaciers and sea ice. The Arctic sea ice extends shrunk by 50% between 2003 and 2011. Of course, this opens new opportunity for business development. This has been discussed during the last day, rare earth, mining, energy, data cable, it may open new commercial shipping routes, like the Northern Sea Route, which connects Europe to Asia, along the Russian northern and eastern coastline. We witness a remilitarization of the Russian northern coast, as well as a new interest from China through its Belt and Road Initiative. All this lead to growing assertion of sovereignty from riparian state of the Arctic. We need to seek sustainable development and preserve peace, as said Ambassador Koenigs. Arctic security is not a given and cannot be taken for granted. In Helsinki last month, the Interparliamentary Conference on the Common Security and Defense Policy emphasized that the transformation of the Arctic represents one major effect of climate change on EU security. It stressed that the Arctic should remain a region of no conflict cooperation. This implies a continued engagement and dialogue with Russia and all parties within the framework of Arctic regional cooperation. These three points were at the heart of the work the French Senate conducted both on the EU Arctic strategy and on the French national roadmap roadmap for the Arctic. The EU strategy adopt, adopted in 2016 followed three priorities. 
climate change and safeguarding the Arctic environment, of course, sustainable development in around the Arctic, and international cooperation on Arctic issues. The French National Roadmap for the Arctic, also adopted in 2016, is in line with the EU strategy and articulated with it. I think it is very important that it goes further and also organize the geostrategic challenge. Three years later, the world has changed. Climate change has faster consequences in the Arctic than expect. Multilateralism is challenged. Some states are affirming that national ambition, ambition in the Arctic supported by military activism. I think it's now time to updating and upgrading the Arctic policy on the, of the European Union. I know this, what, this was also one of the conclusions of the first EU Arctic Forum held in Sweden last week. In 2017, the French Senate was a bit critical of the EU strategy for the Arctic. André Catalan stressed that it did not deal with the geopolitical consequences of climate change and it was also, to some extent, lacking of clearly identified means. Dear Madame Koenigs, we are very satisfied that the EU appointing an ambassador to tackle this issue. This was one of André Gatolin's proposal, and I must say that you have accomplished your mission with great talent. Yet, we still face a challenge of efficiency of visibility the next multi-annual financial framework will be very important to give efficiency to European Arctic policy. The paper related in July by the European Policies Political Strategy Centre stress the new challenge and agree with the overall statement. Then the question is how and when do we upgrade the Arctic strategy of the EU? We know that the EU procedures are very formalized and may be long, but we don't have so much time. I really think it is an important matter for all of us in Europe. As President Nistor Finland put it one month ago in Ilseki, if we lose Arctic, we lose the world. Thank you.